Joining me now is Sal Mercagliano. He's a maritime historian, former merchant mariner. And you know, Sal, it's good to have you with us. You know this type of boat very well, in addition to the area where it's been and where it spends most of its time there in the Mediterranean. First, talk to me about, about the boat itself, its form, which actually can make it a little bit more susceptible to, to high seas, as I understand it. Yeah, thank you for having me, Erica. This is a sailing yacht. So we're talking about a ship about 183 feet in length, but what's unique about it is the sail feature. Its mast is over 236 feet in height. That's 50 feet larger than actually the length of the vessel. And since this ship is powered by sail, a windstorm, a water spout, a kind of sea tornado would have an adverse effect against such a vessel. And what struck me, too, my colleague Barbie Nadeau reporting earlier, one of the issues that some of the divers had is the fact that the boat is essentially still intact. So being able to get in there safely and to access um, some of the cabins where we think people may, may have been trapped, that's actually more difficult because it's intact. Just walk us through why. Yeah, so this vessel got hit by that tornado at sea, and what probably happened is because of that type of wind, a very hard burst of water and wind at the same time, probably placed the vessel on its beam end, basically pushed it over on its side. And unless all the hatches had been secured and everything had been battened down, the vessel would have flooded. And based on that report, indicates the vessel probably took on a lot of water very quickly and went down to the bottom. And, and that is nightmaric for the crew on board being asleep and then all of a sudden waking up to a ship in the room you're in, being on its side and flooding with water, heading down to the bottom. Yeah, it's just, it's it's horrific to, to think of um, what people were going through. This area too um, of the, the Western Mediterranean, um, you said this can actually be more prone to, to rough seas than I think probably a lot of people imagine. Yeah, uh, Balin operated in the Mediterranean. It spent its time mainly between Spain and Italy. And while we tend to think of the Mediterranean as, you know, kind of flat and glassy and a beautiful kind of enclosed sea, it can be very rough. And it is susceptible to storms like we saw took place. The ship sailed out of Palermo at the early beginning of the month. It had spent basically a few weeks along the northern shore of Sicily before coming back in. And it's very hard to prepare for a storm like this because you really can't get underway and sail into the wind and waves like a normal storm, this hits you all of a sudden and the wind can hit you from almost any direction. And so given given that fact that, that the weather can come up so quickly, um, just as, you know, as I'm sure people are watching this or other people are thinking, you know, what do I need to take into account if I'm going to be in that area? Is there any way to avoid a moment like this? I mean, in terms of the heads up that you would get, how you can get to a safer space? It sounds like no in many respects. Yeah, it, it's one of the issues on a private yacht. This yacht spends most of its time tied up to a berth or an anchor. It's used for just a few months during the year. Uh, a ship's master or the yacht captain would have been cognizant of weather, you know, getting daily and, uh, you know, frequent weather updates. But you're kind of at the whims of the owner, too, where they want to be. Do you want to do a storm evasion, set out to sea to avoid the weather, or do you want to try to ride it out? And unfortunately, they found themselves in a the position there where the storm came in. And this would have been a very quick event on board the vessel from being everything fine to finding yourselves in extremis. Yeah, it's just a, ter a really terrible tragedy. Uh, Sal, really appreciate your expertise. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.